Phil Ebener here with VideoSchoolOnline.com and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the Puppet tool in After Effects. This is an amazing tool that allows you to animate inanimate objects such as images or graphics. So let's dive right into After Effects to learn how. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the Puppet tool to animate the flying bird. And then we're going to be adding the details. So you're going to learn how to use the Puppet tool really quickly. So if you're in a rush, you can watch the first part of this tutorial and then skip the rest. But let's dive into it. If you want to follow along, I found these images of the bird and the background clouds from pixabay.com, a great place for free images. Search for bird or falcon and then clouds to find those images. Awesome, so what I'm gonna do first is start a new composition. 1920 by 1080 is perfectly fine. I'll just call this Flying Bird. Then I'm going to bring in my Falcon PNG, and it's important to use images if you want to animate objects, characters, anything that don't have a background because the way the Puppet tool works is we're going to be setting pins in this actual image and we're going to be moving those pins and animating those pins around and if there's a background image it's going to also animate that which is not going to look good so if you have another image that has a background go ahead and use something like photoshop to isolate the foreground and remove it and save it as a png like this with a transparent background so i'm just scaling it down for now so that we can see it a little bit better awesome and i'll just increase so we can see so the Puppet tool is pretty cool. It's up here in your toolbar. All you have to do is check that on. Then what you need to do is select the layer that you want to add the Puppet Pins tool. I would suggest checking on this Show Mesh, which we don't see now until we set a pin. And then your expansion and density numbers might be different, but I'll show you what those are in just a second. So. When you're setting your pins, you have to pay attention to where you, the joints are of a character. And so this is for character an animations or animating a bird or something like this. Where would the joints of this bird be? Well, probably one right here on its wing. Now, I don't know the complete anatomy of a bird, but I'm guessing right there. And then also up in the shoulder. But you'll notice that when I set one puppet pin by clicking on this layer, this mesh now appears appears. So if I increase or decrease the density or the expansion, you'll notice that the density creates all of these little different parts or a grid over this image. The higher the density, the more detailed it's going to be. Now the expansion expands what's actually being animated or what's being selected and what you can pin to outside of or within the image itself. So for this image, we don't need it to be that big and also for the density we don't need it to be that dense but if you need more detailed movements you would increase those numbers so i'm going to set my pins here also on the shoulders now i'm going to do a few things to to basically do this the right way uh, but there's some things you might notice that if you take these pins and you start moving them around what happens is the rest of the image starts to warp so if I turn off the mesh, you might be able to see a little bit better. So I can move this around, but if I want to animate this wing up and down by moving this up and down, I don't want the rest of the bird to be moving as well. So what that means is, and I'm going to just undo that, is you need to set pins to areas that you want to stay still as well. So for example, I'm going to set a pin right here on the tip of the beak one right here at the back of the head. I'm also going to set one right here at the back of the wing, uh, each wing. I'm also going to set pins on the edges of the tail back here so that I can potentially move this tail up and down. And then also on the ends of the wing, so if I want to, I can take one of these pins and just animate the very end of the wing itself and not the rest of it. So I hope that makes sense. The more pins you set, you're basically locking down that point. So see if I move this pin at the bottom, the pin right here in the wing up here does not move. It stays in place. Now the back of the wing does move. And so notice that if I set a pin right here, this part of the wing is not going to move as much because it's locked there. But I don't want that because I think it's okay to have that sort of natural movement of the wing right there. 
Awesome. So these are the pins I'm setting for this bird, and I've un I undid a few things. So I'm originally where how the image was set with no movement of the pins. But you notice that as I was doing this and showing you, I was moving these pins around, and that's how we are going to animate. If you press U on your keyboard, that brings up all the keyframes for your layers. And you'll notice that there's already keyframes set for where these pins are. So as soon as you set a pin, it sets a keyframe for that position at that time. So if I go forward on my timeline to one second, for example, now I want to find my pin, so I'm going to select my one of my pins down here or just the puppet effect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate these wings down. So I'm going to animate that wing down, this part of the wing down, this part of the wing down, and this part of the wing down just a little bit. Maybe this part of the wing in just a little bit too. Whoa, not like that. Let's undo that. Okay, it's like this one, move it around just, okay. So what I basically did was at the beginning the wings are up and now at one second the wings are down and you can see that in my timeline four keyframes have been set. I know it's a little hard for you to see but keyframes for the four pins that I moved, okay? So what I want to do is actually complete the motion of the wings going down and I'm also going to move these pins at the back of the, e the falcon's tails down. So I'm going to shift click these pins and at one second when the wings are down, I'm going to move them down as well. And so if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that it's starting to look like the motion of a flying bird. So those pins are going down. So how can we easily sort of duplicate this motion so the wings are flapping up and down? Well, we can duplicate these keyframes. So I'm gonna take all of the keyframes by selecting and dragging over those keyframes that we've selected or set key new keyframes for and then shift clicking and cl dragging over these bottom ones as well. So now I have all the keyframes that we've animated so far selected. And if I copy them, Command C on my Mac, Control C on a PC, and then I'm at the second second on the timeline and then paste them. Now it tells After Effects that we want the wings to go back up and then go back down. So we can do that again, select all of these and then shift select all of these bottom ones and copy them and go to four seconds and then paste them. So this is a good amount of time. We want to go until the wings are back up. So we'll just go to six seconds, for example, and we'll bring in our sort of in and out point for our composition. So if we play through this, we might have to drop down our resolution for playback so we can easily see it a little bit better. We can see we have this sort of natural looking bird flying. Now, again, I am not a biologist. I don't know exactly what a bird flying looks like, except for all the ones that I've seen throughout my life. Maybe the wings should look a little bit different, but this looks pretty good for me. I am going to add easy ease to all of these keyframes. So I've selected all of them. And then if I press F9 on my keyboard or just right click, choose keyframe assistant and then easy ease, that adds a little bit more flow to the motion. And you can go into the graph editor and change the speed. I have other tutorials on that so you get some more organic motion. But I think this looks a little bit more natural because it basically ramps the motion up and down so that it looks more like this bird is flying. Now, say in the middle of this, we want our bird to look from left to right. We can go in and say around here, we want to find this pin and move it. So I'm going to first click this pin. I see that it's puppet pin number five. I'm going to click over here to add a keyframe at this current time, or I could just copy and paste the keyframe from the very beginning because from this point to this point, I don't want any movement. But from here to say three seconds, we want the bird to look down. So let's just move the bird's head down just a little bit. You notice if I go too far, it starts to get warped. So that's not gonna look good. So I just wanna go ever so slightly down. And then at four seconds, he's gonna still be looking down. So I'm going to copy and paste this last keyframe that I just set. And then he's going to move back up to around five seconds. So I'm going to copy this first keyframe and paste it. So now I have this bird who is going to look down, 
see something good to eat or whatever he's looking at while he's flying. And that looks pretty good. We're just going to add easy ease to all of these keyframes. So select all of them, F9 on my keyboard. So that's pretty much all you need to know about how you can add animation using the Puppet tool. There's lots more you can get into it with animating and record options and things like that. But for now, I say this is a good way to play around and just practice using this Puppet tool. Try using it on different images to see how it works. Next, we're going to fill out our animation and create this sort of unique sort of flying bird look. And so the first thing I'm going to do is bring in our sky and drop it down beneath our falcon. And we could play around with the size and scale in a moment, but I am going to decrease the size of my falcon. And the good thing now is if I just decrease the scale of our falcon, all of the motion of the pins is still in there. So it doesn't adjust any sort of positioning or any issues with the puppet pins themselves. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the sky. And I'm going to animate the sky so that it looks like the bird is flying through it. So I'm going to scale up just a little bit to like 120 so that we have a little bit of more room to play with. And then I'm going to press P on my keyboard to bring up the position. And I'm going to move this basically down to the left. And so if I take my selection tool, I can show you I'm going to animate this way so that it looks like the bird is flying from left to right. So I'm going to move the image right about there, set a keyframe at the very beginning, and then at six seconds, I'm going to move the image up like this. So now if I play through this, it looks like the bird's flying through the air. Now if this is going too fast or slow, you might want to increase or decrease the speed or the distance between these keyframes or the position itself to make it look a little bit more natural. I'm also going to add the Gaussian blur effect. So in your effects and presets, type in Gaussian, G-A-U-S-S, -S, to see Gaussian blur, and drop that out down onto this so that we can blur out the sky in the background just a little bit. Also turn on repeat edge pixels, just in case you do see the edge, so that we have this sort of shallow depth of field look. And that's really what's going to make and take your animations to the next level is adding this depth. So the other way we can add depth is to add some clouds flying by in the front. So to do that, I'm going to use a new solid. So command Y. So I'm going to call this cloud one. So this is just a white solid. So make sure you set it to white. Click OK. Then take the ellipse tool up here and let's just make a cloud. So something like this. Just drawing some ellipses, something like that. Select all the masks in the cloud layer just by shift clicking them. Press F to bring up feathering. And we're going to drag up the feathering, something like this. For me, 298 looks good. Then we're just going to animate this cloud flying by. So we're going to animate it with position. Whoops. I want to select this so it goes by the falcon like so. Press P on my keyboard. I'm going to set a position down beneath this composition, so down in the bottom left of frame. I'm going to put this keyframe at the very beginning, or somewhere around one second might be good. Then around four seconds, we're going to move it up past the right corner, top right corner. So now it looks like this bird is flying through this cloud. Now we can quickly duplicate this press Command-D to duplicate this layer and move it up or down with the anchor point. So we've already set the position keyframe, so we don't want to mess around with the positioning because that will adjust the animation. But if we press A to bring up anchor point, we can actually move these clouds up or down. And now this cloud, it flies by at the top of the screen. See how that works? And then we can duplicate one more time. Press A. Let's drag down. So it flies by at sort of the bottom. And then let's also change the timing. So I'm going to drag this cloud back a little bit to the right so it appears a little later. Same with this top one, just a little bit later. So they're kind of staggered. Now pay attention, though, too, because this cloud right now is appearing right here on the left side of our frame. So I'm going to press P to bring up our position, go to that position, and then just drag it off the frame. 
so that it starts off the frame and then it comes onto the frame. So you can play around with this uh, and have a lot of fun with this, but this is a quick way. And you, maybe you want to put one of these clouds behind, actually. Maybe this last cloud we added goes behind the Falcon just to create more layers, more depth. See how now that cloud goes behind the wing, but in front of the background clouds? That's pretty cool, too. The other thing you can do is add motion blur to the Falcon. Now, the pins and the animation might not be working fast enough to have any motion blur, but if we select our Falcon layer, switch to toggles, switch the toggle switches modes so that we have the motion blur column, which is the, these three dots, check that on, and then also check on the enable motion blur for all layers. So it's actually enabled for this composition. You can see that if I try to play this out, it's going to not render that smoothly. So I definitely need a faster computer if I'm adding all of these effects. I can decrease the resolution quality. That might add a little bit of motion blur um, to, it might be something you want to add at the very end right before you export. Uh, I would definitely recommend that. So this is how you can use the Puppet tool. I know this was a very long uh, tutorial, but hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the Puppet Pin tool, about After Effects, or any other things, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any requests for other tutorials, also hit me up in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in another tutorial. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com, where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.